Imran Khan once captained his country at cricket. Now the talk in Pakistan is of him leading his country again, perhaps as prime minister. Certainly only someone as revered as Imran could have pulled off his latest coup. In Islamic Pakistan, Imran has taken a foreigner as his bride, a foreigner with a Jewish background who is half his age. Jemima Goldsmith, daughter of a British billionaire, has gone to live with Imran in his home city of Lahore. Her husband says his playboy days are over. He is committed now to changing his country fundamentally. In some parts of the world, he's only a hero. In Pakistan, he's a demigod. But Imran Khan doesn't care anymore for the game that brought him all the adulation. At 42, he is reborn as a symbol of Muslim pride and the brightest political prospect in a country staggering under the twin burdens of poverty and corruption. You know, we, if, if I see my country heading uh, downwards, and I, why should I not talk about it or say something and make myself heard and hope that other people join it? In a democracy, I mean, we all have the right to say what we think is right. If I have a platform, I should speak out. You know, this is the essence of democracy. Anyone in a position, and by the way, this is also very much Islam. You're supposed to stand up and say what you think is right. All the same, you're standing up more than most other people in this country. Not at all. Uh, there are a lot of people saying the same thing as me. You but know, with what not, I'm not saying... Not the kind of attention paid to them but that, this that is you. What you're saying is that people do not have the platform which I've got. All the more reason for me to say it. And he has plenty to say. Pakistan, he believes, should discard what the British left behind, starting with the legal system, and return to tribal law. His countrymen should wear only traditional dress, as he does. And English should give way to Urdu, Pakistan's main language, in the country's schools. His conviction springs, he says, from a spiritual awakening to Islam. As far as those of us looking on can judge, you've gone from cricketer to social reformer, from man of the world to Pakistani nationalist, and from playboy to devout Muslim and husband. That's quite a transformation, isn't it? Uh, the assumption is that we don't change. Uh, when we pray five times a day, we always repeat one thing in the prayers, that, oh, oh God, guide me on the right path. Now, you know, if we weren't to change, uh, you know, we would not come on the right path. I mean, this is the right path is every day. In your mind, is this a genuine spiritual awakening that he's gone through? Some of it must be genuine. Um, it's as genuine as a confused person's spiritual awakening can be. Jugnu Mohsin is editor of Pakistan's Friday Times and a fierce critic of Imran Khan. Um, he stands on a high pedestal and lectures us about how we ought to live and how we ought to um, be proud of our culture and our roots and our heritage, and we are. We are. We know who we are. It's he who doesn't know who he is. An arranged Muslim marriage to a local girl. That was the expectation. An expectation encouraged by Imran himself in Pakistan. But ultimately, Imran selected his own bride and she was neither Pakistani nor Muslim. British, with a Jewish background, Jemima Goldsmith was the daughter of one of Britain's richest men. Are you mad? Are you crazy? Yes, but I'll go and eat roast no, chicken at home and I won't get ill mm. on that, so. When she converted to Islam and married Imran Khan, she turned her back on her old life, 
just as her husband had done. Have a bit of yogurt and some rice. Yeah? And this is really, I mean, I have no sympathy for you, Mike, you suffer. This is really suicide. Right? Do you see this marriage as a turning away from the life that you may have led in other parts of the world? You mean uh, a playboy? Is <laughs> you that said what you it. You said it. You mentioned a headline to me earlier. What was it? Love rat in the papers? Romeo rat. <laughs> a Romeo rat. Romeo rat. Did you think you were was... marrying a Romeo rat? <laughs> um, well, I, I hoped I wasn't. I don't think you're a Romeo rat. Tell me, does the word love play a part in what has brought you together? I hope so. Um, you know, I'll just uh, say that in our culture, you know, a public show of affection and publicly talking about uh, these things is sort of not really uh, considered very... Um, very common and I think it's between two people mm. because you know you see in Hollywood people sort of proclaiming love you know and this huge love affair and two years later they are divorced it's quite embarrassing but it's an interesting difference in your responses Jemima said yes I hope so and you were reticent to talk about it it's only because it's uh, always considered something too mushy to talk about in public I mean it's between two people mm -hmm. but there is some of that stuff there obviously well, there must be something to have got married to her. Yeah. He's um, a middle-aged man who has decided to tie the knot with a, a girl half his age who is um, British uh, and uh, the, the, the daughter of a Zionist billionaire. And um, he's telling us what we ought to do and how we ought to live. Now, if I married because the other culture was superior, if I married her because I thought she was white and superior in English, then of course uh, it is a hypocrisy. The fact is that an English girl has come and live, uh, started living in my culture. Assalamualaikum. I recognize you. Assalamualaikum. If there's a reason, other than his fame and his faith, that Imran Khan is seen as a political contender, this is it. In less than five years, he raised the Shaukud Khanna Memorial Cancer Hospital from the ground. A world-class cancer treatment and research facility, it was built in honour of his mother who died of cancer in 1985. And it was built almost entirely on the strength of his passion for the cause. A passion Jemima is now caught up in. Best laboratories in the tank in Asia, one updated compared to any laboratory in the world. I haven't seen this before either, so it's a guided tour from you the haven't? zoo. No. no, I've only really been to the ward. People, the longer they live, I guess, accumulate more wisdom. Do you have any sense of Imran, who is twice your age, yeah. being a wiser person than you are now? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I think he's definitely got a lot to teach me, but... And you're prepared to learn from him? Yeah, I hope he's prepared to learn from me a bit too, but at 21, who knows, who knows what I can do. Imran speaks a lot about choosing a wife who has a vision that is compatible with his vision. Do you feel that you share his vision? Well, I hope so. And you believe that I the believe two of you I believe in the do? same things, yeah. I think... Um, what instinctively I think he's on um, instinctively I would say that on most occasions I I believe in his judgment you know you mean my husband is never wrong no I don't mean my husband's wrong he's wrong quite often but I mean that um, that what he believes in instinctively is, is something which actually we share you know we I'm being so hopelessly inarticulate. <laughs> no, <you're not. laughs> I'm sorry. She, she thought it wasn't, uh, there was no hope. On his fundraising drives for his hospital and his newly launched literacy campaign, Imran Khan is seen by the public as a man who gets things done for the love of it. Genuinely, I didn't actually realise how completely he's wholeheartedly dedicated his life to this project. But his enemies in government see nothing but a potential political adversary, even though he denies it. I mean, if I wanted to join politics, I, my first offer was way back six, seven years back, when General Zia offered me to join his, uh, the interim government as a, as a minister. 
You know, I mean, if that was all this manipulation was going to be propelled into a ministership with a flag in front of my car and sitting in high office, I would have jumped in by now. There's at least one person in this country who does not accept Imran Khan's assurances that he has no political aspirations, and that's the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Benazir Bhutto. She and her government have done everything imaginable to erase Imran Khan from the minds of Pakistanis, and they've gone to some grotesque lengths to achieve that. An ad for Khan's cancer hospital has been banned from the nation's TV screens. A promotion for the national airline trumpeting Pakistan's spectacular 1992 World Cup win has won stunning omission. It makes no mention at all of the captain who led them to that glorious victory. You know, we are blotted out of television. We cannot make an appearance on TV. One producer, just because he let my name go through, was suspended for four days on Lahore television because in a quiz program he let my name slip. Uh, the hospital has not been shown on Pakistan television ever since it's been made. No one, people haven't seen the hospital. The government clearly believes Imran Khan is a political threat as much as his followers believe that he's a political hope. His denials are not helped by the fact that at rallies like this one, he talks about restoring national pride, he talks about rejecting foreign aid, and he talks about cleaning up corruption. In fact, he talks a lot like a politician. And what worries some in Pakistan is that the playing field of politics is far more treacherous than the gentleman's game he once played. Cricketers don't often become social reformers. They don't often become politicians. Is it possible that you might be naive in your thinking in relation to all of this? Uh, in doing what? I in mean. the fact that you don't seem to want to admit that you might be able to be manipulated in all this because of your status here. You see, firstly, I mean, it's not that I've just recently got any fame. I mean, if I was to be manipulated, uh, you know, I was a name here for quite a while. And I've been approached by political parties for quite some time. Now, if I was that type, why would not have I jumped in before? Well, it's not uncommon for aspiring politicians to become involved in social and community programs to test the water for their support. It's not a crime to do that. Couldn't, <laughs> mightn't you be doing that? <laughs> I suppose people must look at it like that. Uh, test my water. OK, so I've tested my water. There was a lot of support. I saw a lot of people in the towns coming out. So I've tested it. Now surely should, I should be jumping in now, because that's what was predicted, by the way. They thought it's imminent now and he's about to launch a party or something. My objective is that if I am in a position to help uh, my country, I will try and do that. And I feel that in the current state of affairs, the way our political system is so corrupt, I can do a lot more good to my country outside politics. And that's what I'm trying to do. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.